Hey, how are you doing? It's Graham Taylor here at Hudson Rose, channeling my inner Pat Butcher with my leopard skin uh, top today, which I personally love. Anyway, what we're talking about is not my leopard skin jacket, but actually about uh, car finance and how it affects mortgage applications, okay? Now, there's three ways broadly in which you can buy a car in the UK today. You can either do it through something called PCP, where you pay a deposit, make payments each month, and at the end, you've got optional bloom payment to buy the car out right at the end, or you give it back. You've got something called PCH, personal contract hire, which is where you don't own the car at all. You've got no chance of owning it. You're just renting it month to month over a period of sort of up to you know three years or normally. Or you've got your classic kind of uh, hire purchase where you're making payments each month. And once you've paid it all uh, to the, the car is yours, no bloom payment, no chance of handing it back. Okay, those are the three ways. What does a mortgage lender look at when they're underwriting this? Well, it's quite straightforward. It's simply the amount, the cost of the monthly payment that you are making is taken as if it was a personal loan. So it doesn't matter whether or not you say, well, actually, I'm going to give the car back in you know, eight months' time. Do I need to do it? They'll still take it into account, okay? Because the argument would be, well, even once that ends, you're probably still going to need transport of some description, okay? So PCP, contract hire, or indeed higher purchase, they're always going to look at the monthly payment as a cost. Now, there's a bit of confusion as to actually, well, how much you borrowed? What's the debt that's been underwritten for your car finance? Because if you have a PCP agreement or a contract hire agreement, you're only gonna keep the car for kind of maybe up to three years. But on your credit file, you'll be underwritten for the full amount and the full value of the car. So if your car costs 25,000 pounds, you've got like some nice, nice flash car, then uh, then the, that's going to be on your credit file has been underwritten for the £25,000, even though you're probably only going to make 36 months worth of payments. All right, so really simple, treat it like a loan. If you look at doing affordability calculators on lenders' websites, anything like that, and it says, have you any loans, credit cards, store cards, put it in as a monthly payment as a loan for car finance. Now, the one final thing to mention is that if you are uh, self-employed, and you have a van for work, maybe something like that, and then that is your main transport and it's put through your, uh, your books, then remember you don't need to count it twice because you don't want to double count the fact that you've already paid it before you've got to your net profit figure and then take it off again for mortgage affordability. So that's something that self-employed people have. Same with a limited company. Uh, if your limited company is paying for a company car, then you don't need to put it in your personal name for affordability because the money and the income lenders are going to use it's already gonna have that taken out of it. So pretty straightforward stuff. Um, bit of info about car finance as well. I'm not a car finance expert. I'm not sure which is better, PCP, PCH, whatever. Whatever floats your boat, the money all comes out at the same end. If you need uh, any more information or want to get in touch uh, to see how we can help you with your mortgage, be that a purchase or a remortgage, do check out our website. Uh, that's www.hudson-rose.co.uk. Uh, obviously you got the YouTube channel. Give us a call, 0330 122. Double nine two zero. Um, I'm off to go down the uh, down the pub in the East End with my Pat Butcher top, and I will catch you soon. Cheers, bye.